A lot of people have told me, this looks like a cape. I've always loved capes because you know who wears capes? Superheroes. I remember when I was a little girl, I would jump up and down and bounce all over my grandparents' mattress, pretending like I was flying, like I was the superhero in a cape. I didn't like superheroes because they had capes or because they could fly, even though that is really cool. I loved superheroes because they were always out there helping people and making the world a better place. I always wanted to be a superhero, but a big part of me knew I could never do that. As a little kid, I was too small. But the truth is, we need superheroes now more than ever because the world's problems are worse than ever before. Superheroes are known for solving problems that are bigger than us and bigger than life as we know it. At a young age, we are socialized through media to believe that we need superheroes to solve these big, grand, insurmountable problems and perhaps that they are the only ones who could solve them. The thing is, we don't live in a world of superheroes. But the closest thing we have to superheroes are people like Bill Gates, who is eradicating poverty and life-threatening diseases, and also happens to be able to read over 50 books in a year. Or people like Greta Thunberg, who is a 17-year-old Nobel Peace Prize winner, who can inspire over 7 million in a single day to strike against climate change. We think of people like them, and Gandhi, and Mother Teresa, and Ben Franklin, and Elon Musk. We think of superhumans. And the problem is, most of us here see ourselves as what society knows as normal people. The thing is, what we really need right now are heroes who will suck the excess of CO2 out of thin air, drop food from out of the sky onto food deserts, or create airborne cures for lethal diseases. Really, we have so many reasons to believe we need superheroes and superhumans to solve these big, grand, insurmountable problems, and perhaps are that they're the only ones who can. The truth is, you're not Bill Gates or Greta Thunberg or Gandhi, but the truth is you don't have to be them to make a difference because you can be something better. There's a saying from Spider-Man where Uncle Ben tells Peter Parker, with great power comes great responsibility. But even with little to no power also comes with great responsibility. We have this preconception that we need to have something so big and so special about us to make a difference. And we learn to believe that any difference we choose to make has to be big. And that takes these miraculously capable people. But the fact is, impact doesn't always have to be big. Impact comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes. So, some background on myself, besides liking capes and superheroes. I teach high school students social entrepreneurship through a nonprofit that I started. And social entrepreneurship, for some context, is basically starting businesses and startup ideas that create a kind of social impact on your local community. And in every one of my first sessions, I ask my students this single question. What is the biggest, craziest, wildest thing that you could do to make an impact? Even if it's unattainable, what is the biggest thing you could do? I've gotten answers from curing cancer to ending world hunger to starting a nonprofit. The next question I ask them is, what is the smallest thing that you could do to make a difference? Something so small 
and even effortless, but still makes a positive difference. I've gotten answers from smiling at a stranger to helping a friend or community member to listening to people. It really makes you think. It shows them that impact doesn't always have to be big. And in fact, the smallest things can make the biggest impact. So whether it's smiling at a stranger or helping a friend or community member or listening to people, what if you just went out of your way a little bit every day to do that? Imagine what kind of world we would live in. This collective impact is the most powerful, not just at the individual level, but at the societal level. We live in an extremely unique time because every single global crisis on this planet is a human-generated problem. Ice caps are melting, animals are growing closer to extinction, countries are becoming the world's dumping grounds for trash. Discrimination is depriving over 66 million women and girls from going to school, and that same cause is depriving marginalized communities from equal pay and living opportunities on a systemic and structural level. And we are going through the world's most lethal pandemic because people refuse to wear masks. Imagine if everyone on this planet, for those who can, just recycled one thing a day, turned off our lights whenever we left the room, composted even just one of our meals, shortened our showers even by just a minute, or respected each other despite our differences. Imagine what kind of world we would live in if every single person on this planet just went out of their ways to do this. The fact is, we are greater than the sum of our parts whether it be the problems or the solutions. We may live in a world of big human-generated problems, but it is up to us to create small human-generated solutions. The problem is, we have this problem with big. Because when we think of big problems, we want big solutions. And we spend so much time and energy thinking about the size of these problems that it's easy to get stuck and feel overwhelmed or daunted by the size of these problems, that it makes us feel small and overwhelmed, wishing that superheroes actually did exist. One of my personal heroes is the founder of this junk-free dog treat company called Anubis. It was founded by my student named Freya, who actually created this idea from the experience of her dog being diagnosed with cancer and only being able to eat so much. And the most memorable experience from my work was when she told me, I felt like before I couldn't make an impact. Maybe I didn't have the resources or was too small. I'm a 12 year old who's a 12-year-old who only knows so much because she's a 12-year-old. But doing this program made me take on a new perspective to learn that I can make an impact on people and also dogs. Impact doesn't always have to be big. Really, it is about creating a meaningful impact for someone at some level even if it's in the smallest way. When it comes to impact, even if you think it is small, there are people, whether it's one or many, who could benefit from what you can offer, whether it's small or big. That just, and in fact, that just empowers us even more because the people closest to the problems are closest to the solutions. We only know what we know. Our experiences with these problems equip us with the depth of knowledge and familiarity to be able to solve them. And beyond that, our experiences give us the drive to be able to have that passion to be able to solve these problems for people who are going through them.
But beyond that, our experiences give us the drive. We embody meaning in our experiences. They give us the fuel to drive us to be compassionate, to make an impact, and to solve that problem that we care so deeply about. Freya created a junk-free dog treat company from trying to feed her dog who could only eat so much because he was diagnosed with cancer. Tierra created an all-natural hair care brand created to empower women of color to embrace their natural image. And Shia created a gender non-conforming and plus-sized clothing line because he couldn't help but encounter that phrase, this looks so cute, just not on me, every time he went shopping. It's what we make out of those particular things and experiences and the special meaning that we choose to embody in them. It's what allows us to care more, to develop this soft spot. We are more driven to solve the problems we care most about, that are closest to us, the ones that are closest to our hearts, and the problems that we feel the most pain points from, so that others don't have to go through them, or perhaps could have an easier time overcoming them. That is what makes impact so important. And that's what makes it so special. So I'm not asking you to go start your own clothing line or an app to go change the world. But the most important thing is to realize that to make a big difference, we have to think smaller. It begins with asking yourself, what is the smallest thing you can do to make a difference? Because that is what makes you the person to get out there and make your mark on the world. The smallest impact is the biggest. And the people closest to the problems are closest to the solutions. That is what makes us all heroes. You are the world's hero. You are your community's hero. And most importantly, you are someone's hero. It begins small, one person at a time and one step at a time. Impact is ironic that way. So go put on your cape and wear it with pride.